This video describes the programming of a tailstock for a multi-channel machine, now available in Esprit. As a manufacturer, in some cases, a tailstock is needed to support the free end of a long workpiece whose length is three to five times greater than its diameter. With Esprit TNG, you can currently use a tailstock on an independent Z-slide and in the sub-spindle, as well as the independent tailstock with or without a hydraulic quill. If you are matching a multi-turret production lathe, the tailstock is mounted on the turret block. In this version, we enhance the turret-mounted tailstock by simplifying the tailstock programming to support long workpieces and by improving the post support. We program this shaft on the CTX Beta 1250 machine, which has two spindles, a B-head and a lower turret. Our part has a diameter of 67 millimeters and a length of 623 millimeters which is nine times its diameter. We are going to use a tailstock to support the part during machine operations. We have programmed the start of the machining process to pick up the subspindle to be able to polish the area where we are going to hold the part with the turret mounted steady rest. Then we engage the steady rest to the machine the front face where the turret mounted tailstock will be positioned. And we disengage it. We can now engage the tailstock into the front end hole we just machined. First we go to the tool assemblies manager and we mount the tailstock on the turret station 2 with the new tailstock command in the tooling ribbon. Then let's insert a location in the operations manager where we want to program the tailstock. To program the tailstock, click on the new tailstock command in the turning or milling ribbons. Note, in this technology page, you have the same options as when you program an independent tailstock. You can define the target point by setting the X, Y, and Z position, or by using the digitize button. And you can also control the clearance distance. We keep the tailstock parameter set to engage, and click on the digitize button to define its target point. The clearance of 2 is good, so we validate. In the program manager, Note that a link has been automatically created before the engage tailstock operation. By simulating the tailstock engagement by step, this link performs a station change on the lower turret, then brings the tailstock into position at the clearance distance in the front of the workpiece. Now that we have set up the tailstock to hold the part, we can rough out the length of the part as much as possible. Then we use the contouring cycles to do the finishing. Finally, we machine all the threads, pockets, and holes. Now that the front side of the shaft has been machined on the main spindle, we need to transfer the part on the subspindle to machine the back side. First, we need to disengage the tailstock, then engage the steady rest so the lower turret can hold the part during the transfer operation. Insert the tailstock cycle and set the tailstock on disengage. As the front end of the part is positioned at the origin, you can directly set the positive Z value. After validating, Let's reactivate the steady rest engagement operation. On disengagement, the link moves the turret away to the station tool change position. This tool change position is necessary to index the turret to the station that carries the steady rest. We can now unsuppress the rest of the operations, which includes the part pickup, the part transfer to the sub spindle with the steady rest, and all of the machining operations on the back side of the part. To summarize, with the new tailstock controls, you can mount a tailstock on the turret block. And like with the steady rest, the tailstock mounting point and its control point are separated, making it easier to program and giving you more program flexibility. Thank you for watching this Esprit product feature video. For more information on this and other Esprit features, refer to the release bulletin and product help.